So I'm going to start that now. <clears throat> and I think you just need to hit OK or got it or some old fun thing like that. Um, but tonight, I'm very excited uh, to spend some time with you and to spend some time with my good friend, Nate, talking about the Tower Garden. Now, Nate and I, we, we are both full-time in ministry. And because we are both full-time in ministry, we have servants' hearts. And we are truly called to help others in every which way we can. And this is why we discovered and we found the Juice Plus Company, which I'll talk a little bit about at our closing. But I want to get right into the Tower Garden because we both feel this is truly a way to serve others. Now, my wife and I, we have seven children at home, and we, have, we own two tower gardens ourselves. They're right in the kitchen, as close as you possibly can get to the cooking area and the dining room table. So it literally is food that we are growing, the freshest it can be, and available to us all year round. Now, we live in New Hampshire. Uh, it's spring right now and we still can't grow outside because it's still getting too cold at night so we're so thankful for our tower gardens the which give us the ability to grow fresh produce all year long with that many kids it saves quite a bit on the grocery bill okay and it's also a powerful learning tool because we homeschool our children as well and um, as educators i want to make that connection very, very clear because what Pam and I have found uh, over the years is this tower garden is wonderful. It's a powerful thing to have at home and to share with our kids and to have available to us. But what we've realized and what we're talking about tonight is there is a much larger purpose that tower garden has. There is a much greater reach that Tower Garden can have to serve communities, not just families, but entire communities. And so we're going to be talking about the potential of the Tower Garden to serve others tonight. We're going to talk about a variety of communities. We're going to talk about schools. We're going to talk about the potential the Tower Garden has in serving church communities and certain ministries within that community, okay? Um, Nate has also found just a profound impact that is made on senior centers. So all of these larger communities, we wanna start thinking bigger when it comes to the Tower Garden. We wanna start thinking about a much larger potential for the Tower Garden. You know, not that it impacting, impacting our families personally isn't powerful, which it is powerful, but it can do so much more and serve so many more people if we bring it into these larger communities. And that's what we wanted to talk about tonight. So what is the Tower Garden? You can see, I have a couple nice images behind me, but just to start, I wanted to share a very short video showing images of the Tower Garden, showing what it is, and how it can maybe be used to kind of set the stage for our conversation tonight.
very cool. So with the tower, whenever we do, whenever we do host an event about the tower garden, the visuals are so important because we can talk about it all day long, but until we know and can see how little space it takes up, that's when we start to catch a vision. And we can see that we can grow up to a half acre of produce in a very small area. Now, believe me, my kitchen is not that large. And, and we have two very comfortably in the corner growing produce all year long. So again, Pam and I, we are you know, educators, we're, we're teachers. Uh, it's, it's just part of our blood. We have this, this servant's heart and we want to serve others. And so it was very, very important for us to learn about the programs in regards to education and, and how the Tower Garden is really made for the classroom and for, as we said at the beginning, that larger community. So it really is the perfect school garden. Okay, and this applies to many other communities, but right now I wanna move into and talk about this area of the school and bringing in into a school community. So the Tower Garden Advantage really is healthier, easier, and smarter. In the classroom, it will bring opportunities for food, nutrition, and learning. This Tower Garden, okay, it's clean, nutrient-dense, and tastier food. What I love about our towers is it grows plants three times faster than traditional gardening. And it increases yields by an average of 30%. So it's growing faster and it's yielding more produce over a shorter period of time. In the classroom, it provides an opportunity for students to succeed at something new and grow their own food. What a powerful thing. What a powerful thing. I'll always remember when I was assisting in kindergarten, I, I worked many years as, as a paraprofessional in the public school system. And assisting in kindergarten, we had this jaw-dropping, eye-opening lesson that where we would talk about where our food comes from. And so many of these kids did not know. Well, the grocery store. No, but no. Do you plant a cow and grow it in the ground? No. Where does our meat come from? Where does our produce come from? Our fruits and vegetables, they didn't know. So it was very, very eye-opening. This is the potential of the Tower Garden in school, okay? Nurtures healthy habits. The more vegetables students grow, the more vegetables they will want to eat. And imagine trying a new vegetable at school for the first time that you had never even heard the name of, right? And it's convenient for teachers. Teachers don't have time, okay? And again, a lot of this will apply to our other communities we're going to talk about in, in a few minutes. All right, so it's very convenient. This is excellent for beginners. You don't need a green thumb to grow a tower garden. Okay, underline an exclamation, exclamation. You don't need a green thumb to grow a tower garden. There is no digging and no weeding because it does not grow in the dirt. There's no dirt, there's no soil involved in growing plants in the tower garden. There's no excessive watering schedule for teachers. It waters itself, okay? The, the watering system is on a timer, the pump is on a timer, and it waters itself when it needs to, along with the lights, which provide it the light that, it's, that it needs. There's no need to take the class outside to an outdoor garden site. And again, the space, it easily fits into a small space, into a classroom, okay, with 20 plus growing ports, okay, which are, it's a vertical growing system. So it takes up much less space. It's on wheels. One school can own one of these and they can wheel it from classroom to classroom and the whole community can take part or they can choose to just keep it in a central place. Okay, and again, from an educational standpoint, the tower really touches all subjects and disciplines that are taught in school. This is not just science. This is math, writing, art, literature, everything. Okay, we can connect the tower and bring it into every subject that's taught in school. And that's why the company made such a point and saw it that it was so important 
to create common core aligned lesson plans for grades K to 12, which are provided free of charge and which are supplied by the company. The company really takes this seriously. Um, they don't like to do things, you know, at half seas, they like to go all in. And so they provide all of these resources for educators. And what I, also what I love about the Tower Garden is it's a very sustainable. It uses much less water, okay? It uses only 10% of the land of traditional farming, okay? And it recycles 100% of the nutrients and water that, that you put in the basin of the tower. There's no need for pesticides and herbicides because when you're growing indoors, and the tower itself, the, the white materials made out of is a high quality USDA approved UV stabilized food grade plastic. You cannot just go get this stuff at the Home Depot in the plumbing aisle. Okay, this is a very high quality material that the tower garden is made out of. Okay, so in the schools, it's such a powerful thing. And I want to... Um, I, I, I can never talk towers without bringing up one of my personal heroes. And then I'm going to pass it to Nate right after this. But I want to share one more quick video with you about a man named Stephen Ritz. And he has, he is the definition of using the tower gardens in the classroom in a powerful and impactful way that has completely transformed his community in the Bronx, okay? Um, and what he calls this movement is the Green Bronx Machine. So, Emma, there we go. My, My favorite part of Green Bronx Machine is when we cook. Cooking. And like make new foods that some people haven't tasted before and presented to the world. I love Green Bronx Machine because that's where you can make friends. I'm mostly friends with everyone in the program and I'd be nice to them. So they'd be nice to me. I love Green Bronx Machine because we get to cook and we get to do a lot of things. We get to have fun. Lots of people kept talking about it and also because it was very cool. I love Green Rock Machine because I like trying new things. My favorite thing I learned is when we grow our plants and when we make our new foods that we get to try them. Even if we don't like them, we still try them, but that's fine with me. I didn't know that you could grow stuff inside and then you could grow stuff without soil. My favorite thing that I learned is how to plant. My favorite part we're working with plants because we get to help them grow. We don't really see the plant grow, but I think Mr. Ritz has seen a plant grow. The happiest is when I come here because it helped me learn a lot from the box machine and also helped me eat better. Sometimes I have a hard day in school, and when I get here, I have more fun. And I like the green box machine. We all work together, and that we're like a family. And that when you're with Mr. Ritz and Mrs. Ritz, they, they take care of you like you're their own children. They're great teachers. Mrs. Ritz, Mr. Jesse, and Mr. Ritz are, have to say, the best teachers in the world. And that's why I love the Green Rock Wow, wow, wow. So we had to hear it from the kids and the students because that's what really matters. This is impacting a community. So the Tower Garden has so much more potential than just in a home. This has a, the potential 
for transforming and changing communities. And so I'm going to throw it over to Nate now because he's going to continue the conversation and talk about some different communities that he's seen really be impacted by the Tower Garden in such a powerful way. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Adam. So, yeah, like we all, I think, have had the experience at some point where we came to our boss with an idea. And we said, I have an idea to do whatever it is we do. And it just went super well and it went phenomenal. And the results were amazing. And we got a big pat on the back and, and like, a, that was so creative and that was so inspiring. And I'm so glad you thought that up and well done, good job and all that kind of stuff. We're like, yeah, I'm awesome. And, um, you know, the cool thing about those types of ideas is they're also the most risky ideas. Like they're the ideas that like, you know, you say, well, I think we're gonna try this. And if it works, it's gonna be really, really cool. And if it doesn't, it's going to be not so cool. <laughs> like, I imagine that's how, like, Tony Hawk must have felt every time he's gotten ready to, pull, to practice a new uh, set or trick. Like, if I pull this off, it's going to be so cool. And if it's not, I'm going to the hospital. <laughs> um, but what I'm hoping to share with you today is a handful of concrete ideas that can be used in ministry that are some of those like really cool over the top ideas that get us a big pat on the back and they're there i'm going to put them in the lens of uh religious education or dres and youth ministry for youth ministers but there's a lot of overlap between the ideas and before we hop into that let's start out let's talking about some of the challenges that these two groups face so like uh let's start with dres you know um we all know as DREs, we need to, well, we, in general, we keep track of service hours for our seventh and eighth graders or for our confirmation class, whatever grade that may be in. And confirmation hours is one of those things that in many parishes is kind of like a weak point in the program. And it's not because it's not for lack of trying. It's more so like, because, you know, there's only so much a DRE can do to be on top of that. So, we try and get some guidance. We, we want, we want, what we want our kids to do is we want them to go out and help others with a servant heart and the joy of Christ. And, you know, say, Hey, you know, I want to do this because I want to help you and I want to be awesome. And it's going to help my faith. That's what we want, but so many kids aren't there. So we try and help guide them towards that direction. We say, well, do some hours as for your family and do some for your community and do some for your church. And then we all have those families that they, come up and they say, oh my gosh, confirmation is in a month and I haven't touched the service hours yet. What am I going to do? So we try and scramble to find some sort of service hours to do. And they're not always the best service hours. Like, it's just something we was like, well, you know what? I was going to do this at home. I was going to stuff envelopes with this mailing, but you can do it here. This would be your service hours. Stuff envelopes with this mailing. And it's almost like an afterthought, you know, like, I mean, it's good. It's helpful, but it's almost an afterthought of like, you need hours, I need envelope stuff, here you go, you know? And we, we do that, but we don't really feel that it will, um, we don't really feel that it will like bring out that servant heart of Christ that we want to share with others. It won't give them that tangible experience of the Beatitudes and the corporal works of mercy and things like that. Uh, additionally, with COVID, pretty much all of us, we stopped our service hours right then and there, you know, for the most part, we all just said, well, don't worry so much about it because most people don't want you near them right now doing things. So, um, and, and if you, if they do want you, it, it gets very, very complicated of who's okay being there and things like that. So, um, and, and we'll just sort of getting back to a point where we can start thinking about doing some of those activities again. But even when we get into those activities that are concrete and tangible of like, you know, helping other people with yard work or grocery shopping or things like that, it's like, how do you get the people to coordinate that? You know, we've got 101 other things to worry about, much less who's going to coordinate the teens going to help mow Mrs. McGillicuddy's lawn or whatever, you know? Um, we don't want to be the one hosting every single service that opportunity, but we want them to have that experience of like, tangibly being involved with the corporate works of mercy that's what our our um service is supposed to service hours are supposed to do for the teens 
and Tower Garden has some solutions for that, uh, which we'll get to in a minute, because youth ministry, we've got to talk about youth ministers. Okay, so I did youth ministry for like 10 years before I became a DRE. And the number one service project that is always given to youth ministers everywhere, like this is the top of the list. We get calls about this all year round. Um, we need 150 chairs set up in the social hall for an event this weekend. We were thinking the youth ministry could come and set those chairs up. And then maybe after the event is over, tear them down. <laughs> and which don't get me wrong, setting up and tearing down chairs is there is goodness in that. But again, it doesn't show the teams that tangible service that we want them to experience. It doesn't show them what it means to be Christ to others. It's a good thing, but it's not the thing that we need them to do. Now on the opposite end of, uh, end of that spectrum, there's those amazing Catholic heart work camp trips or, or week long service trips. You just go out and you take teens to like some place like the middle of remote Tennessee, like where they film deliverance or something like that. And you have them go build houses and help people and stuff. And like, it's amazing. Like those programs do amazing things, but they cost a lot of money. And it takes a week of your time away from your home, your family, the office. You, who knows what's waiting for when you get back from those service trips. Not everybody can afford to go on those service trips. Now you also have to think about fundraising for those service trips. You know, like these are things that as youth ministers, we struggle to figure out how to balance that. We don't want to be a full-time fundraiser. We don't want to be the people who just set up chairs each week. And we don't want to be the people who are always going on week-long service trips to get the experience we want. All right. So I've got three categories of where the tower garden can fit into these problems. And whoever invited you to this call, they will connect with you afterwards to sort of help figure out where some of these ideas might fit in with your specific parish and ministry and how it might help you specifically um, for your, your particular vision. But in general, let's start with fundraisers because everybody has to fundraise and nobody likes to do it because it can be so much work. Like I remember when I found a fundraiser, they're like, just put envelopes out and put, ask people to put money in it. It's basically what it was. And I was like, sweet. All I have to do is put envelopes out and wait for the money to come in. I can do this, you know, because fundraising was like not on the top of my list of fun things to do. But with Tower Garden, we can make fundraising more interesting and more student focused. So here's a few examples. Um, there's this wonderful thing called a salad in a jar. So the idea is you get mason jars. And then you build a salad in it and it's portable. You can take it with, with you wherever you want. And then when you're ready for it, you pop off the lid and you have a salad right there. You can eat it out of the jar or pour it into a bowl, whatever works for you. So in your tower garden, grow stuff you need for a salad in a jar. Your kids or teens can assemble these salads in a jar and then they can man the tables to sell them. And you can do something simple, like sell a simple salad in a jar, which is just lettuce, tomato, and kale with some salad dressing. Or you can go a lot more complex, lettuce, tomato, green pepper, kale, cucumber, and salad dressing, you know, whatever works for you. And there's a price difference for those two things, obviously, uh, because there's more in one than there is in the other. You can do different sized mason jars if you want. There's a lot of flexibility in this and a lot of ways you can do it. And there's a lot of involvement the kids can have because they can help, you know, set up the tower garden, start the seeds, put the seedlings in the tower garden, maintain the water level and the tonic level, harvest the produce, you know, chop it up, put it in the, in the jars, sell the jars, you know, all those things for being involved with them. It, it's wonderful. Uh, here's another uh, really fun and easy one. You can grow flowers in the tower garden. So um, now you can't put bulb flowers in it like tulips, but uh, you can put some really interesting flowers, violets and wildflowers and zinnias and different things like that and grow flowers, make some small flower bouquets and you can sell those as, as little bouquets, maybe for Mother's Day or maybe if there's a dance coming up or around prom time, you know, buy a unique uh, bouquet for your prom date, something like that. And 
And again, like the kids can be involved with starting the seeds, getting them in the tower, maintaining the water level and the tonic, and <clears throat> um, then picking the flowers, wrapping them in plastic, making them look pretty, selling them at the table. There's lots of involvement there. Um, now, that, and this is a fun one. This is actually quite fun. If you put your tower garden in a central place in your parish, someplace that everyone can see it, um, a fun thing to do is, again, grow like flowers, something like that, and raffle off tickets for each flower that you have growing. And the idea is whoever's flower blooms first is the winner. You divide the winnings amongst whoever voted for that flower. So it's much like a, a Chinese basket raffle thing. You know, you have your ticket, you put it in the basket for whichever flower you want. And then now you can take these, you know, these seeds that are growing and you can put it in your, on your parish social media, in your bulletin, in your newsletter, in your emails. And like, look, this, this one's growing. This one's pulled ahead. This one's doing better. They went in the tower garden and who's going to bloom first? Oh, they, these two have buds on them. Which one is going to open first and get a lot of excitement around that. And you're just selling tickets at, you know, five, for five, for five dollars or whatever you decide to do. Um, Another fun thing, just grow produce and have a farmer's market. You know, tomatoes, peppers, kale, lettuce, pull it off, put it on a table and, and come and get it as you will, you know. Um, and again, all the same involvement there. So there, and there's so many options with, with fundraisers that get the teams involved. And here's the best part. They don't involve a lot of time. You don't need, you, you need maybe a half hour to get the seeds started. Then another day, you need maybe a half hour to put them in the tower garden, if that. Then you need like 10 minutes a week to check the water level and the, pee, and the tonic level. It's something a kid can do after mass on a Sunday while you're in the office anyways. You know, um, you need maybe a half hour to harvest your produce or your flowers, and then maybe an hour to make, whether you're making salads in the jars or, you know, plastic wrap flowers, bouquets, whatever, but you don't have to do it all at once. It's broken up into small manageable pieces and it's easy to do and it's effective. There's, the kids are so involved with it for every step of the way. Um, let's talk about service projects specifically now. So again, there are going to be very similar things to what you heard with fundraisers. Uh, again, grow your flowers, make bouquets, and this one is really cool. Make bouquets and donate them as centerpieces to a local nursing home. So like find out how many tables the nursing home has in their cafeteria. Maybe it's 15 tables. So you need 15 bouquets of flowers and get little vases to put them in and donate them as centerpieces to a local nursing home. And you can put a little card on them, you know, like to you from St. Parish, whatever your parish is, Holy Spirit, St. Anne, St. John, whatever. Um, then grow, this is another powerful one, grow produce and have your teams drop it off at a local food bank. Food banks love it when they get fresh produce. And the great thing about it is that with the tower garden, you can control how much you give to the food bank. So if they say we need only a little bit of lettuce, you can pull off just one head and let the rest stay there on the tower garden and bring it again the next week when they need another head. If they say we need 10 bags, you can do that. And then keep going from there. So donating to a food bank. And again, that's as simple as doing the process of growing the food and then pop the teens into cars and drive them down to the food bank so they can see the food bank and see where their efforts are going. Um, grow flowers. Have kids give them to their parents on Parents' Day, Grandparents' Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, or you know, for Valentine's Day, have them have them give flowers out before the masses to um, the the women who come in. You know, for mass, you know, flower per per lady that comes in for Valentine's Day, something like that. Um, grow. This is another fun one. Grow outdoor type flowers and set up times with parish shut-ins to be able to plant them in their gardens for them at their homes. So like, like imagine, like imagine how much joy that would bring a parish shut in if say, Hey, you know, we've got five different types of flowers. We'd love to plant them in your flower bed. When's the time that you're home, we can come say hello, plant your flowers and you can tell us where you'd like them and so on. It'd be, and again, the longest period of time you need for that is the actual going and planting. Maybe, you know, what, 20 minutes per house, something like that, depending on how many flowers you're planting. And you don't all have to, you don't have to do it all in one day if you don't want to. Easy, easy ways to get service hours that are tangible, obvious, 
meaningful, connect to the works of mercy, connect to the um, Beatitudes, and really give that essence of what service is all about and what we want them to get out of it versus just, here, stuff some envelopes because you need to do something. Um, just general activities you can do with the Tower Garden. Make your own salad day. You know, have the kids come. Like I, I did this at my last youth ministry is I just grew stuff on the Tower Garden and said, guys, for snack today, make a salad. They went ballistic over it. Like, and 90% and of what I had was lettuce. And they were so excited to pick lettuce and pour salad dressing on it. And they're like, this is the best lettuce I've ever had in my entire life. No, I don't want a cookie. I want the lettuce. I need to eat more of the lettuce. Like, it was amazing. I, my jaw dropped because if you're, like, if you're like me as a youth minister, half the time the kids come in and you say, I'm saving their soul, but I'm giving them diabetes. <laughs> and now here they are chowing down on lettuce. I'm like, this is great. So. So um, have them make your own salad day. Uh, grow a fruiting plant. So a fruiting plant being like tomatoes, peppers, et cetera, things that make a flower and allow the kids to self-pollinate the plants and see which ones become fruit. So self-pollinating is a fairly easy process. You have to do it when you grow fruiting plants indoors, unless you keep a hive of bees inside, which most places don't. Um, and, but self-pollinating is pretty easy to do. And it's a fun thing to see of like, you know, well, you know, we, we pollinated these flowers. Here's the ones that actually became fruit. And then uh, another fun activity, put, put a seed in dirt, and then put a seed in the tower garden and see the difference in how the two seeds grow. Like grow two lettuce plants, one in dirt, one in the tower garden, see how they grow. And so th these are just some of the ideas of things you can do with tower gardens. There's so much we can do with a tower garden. And, and, and I think perhaps the best thing overall is we're all limited by our growing season. You know, like so many of us who have winter, I, I know some of us who might get the recording might have some place a little warmer, but like uh, a moment, many of us have this thing called winter and like the way the school year works out, we end up only be able, being able to grow things outdoors, at least for like the first month or two of our school year and the last month of our school year and everything in between it's too cold, but with the tower garden, we can do this year round. Year round, we can do this. It doesn't matter what time of year it is because we've got what we need to grow indoors efficiently. And it offers a way, it, this offers us a way to grow produce and use it in ministries and classrooms whenever we want. It gives us service projects, it gives us fundraisers, and it gives us time. That may be the most valuable things. It gives us more time to focus on ministering to our teens, to the kids, to our families, and to actually do what we wanted to do when we signed up for our jobs, as opposed to figuring out, you know, where's the next uh, mailer of envelopes I can give to this kid to do service hours. So that's what I have, and I'll give it back to you, Adam. Very cool. I love just those tangible ideas. And again, it goes back to bringing the tower garden into communities. I mean, maybe you're listening to this call, maybe you're on tonight, maybe you're listening to the recording and you're thinking of a community that we didn't even talk about tonight. This, this really crosses over the lines and can be applied to so many different larger communities where the tower garden can make an impact. Now, what I love about the Juice Plus company is they're all about serving others and they're, the goal of the Juice Plus company is really to get more whole food nutrition, more plants into people and make a, an impact on every life possible, as many people worldwide as it can. And that's why in addition to the Tower Garden, what Nate and I are very thankful for with our very busy and hectic ministry schedules, okay, are the other products that Juice Plus provides. Now, when, when we're you know, powering through the weekends, because I essentially live at the parish every weekend, you know, that's the busy time. That's the busy time for ministry. That's when everything is happening. And so when we are there, when we are in the thick of that, I am so thankful for the other products Juice Plus provides. They provide a... Uh, a fruit, a vegetable, and a berry blend of a capsule or chewable. 
And what this provides, this is really the trunk of the tree as far as the Juice Plus products concern. What this provides, when I consume my fruit, vegetable, and berry blends, three different blend of capsule or chewable, I'm putting 32 different fruits and vegetables into my body every single day. And I cannot afford that at the grocery store. And it is a whole lot cheaper doing it this way. So I'm thankful for that trunk of the tree. The Juice Plus company also provides, this is one of its newest products, an omega blend. Omega, omega fatty acids are so important, but I am not taking fish oil. The omega blend is a completely vegan source of omega fatty acids. It, instead of taking it from the fish, the company used its smarts and said, hey, we're going to go right to the source. We're going to take the omega from the plant that the fish eats. And so it's a totally vegan source of omegas three, five, six, seven, and nine. So it's not only an omega three, you're getting this wide spectrum of omega fatty acids. Now, oh, let me go grab a bite to eat like in between meetings. No, the Juice Plus company also provides a complete protein shake in either vanilla or chocolate. You guys, this is the best source of on-the-go nutrition I've ever had. It's delicious. It's good with water. It's good with milk and other things and a Nutribullet, however you make it. When I'm at the church, I usually just shake it with water and go. But there's also <clears throat> one more product that the Juice Plus company provides, which really has people who are on the go in mind. Uh, a, can, a Juice Plus Complete Nutrition Bar. And again, this is a whole food, plant-based source of, of protein, a vegan protein, a good nutrition, the whole mindset being we want to provide good food for people that are always on the go. That's the, that's the mindset behind the shakes and the bars. So the trunk of the tree is the capsules and the chewables. And then we have the complete shakes and bars when we're just running and we need that nutrition on the go. And it's a whole lot better than running into McDonald's in between meetings, right? And so the Juice Plus company provides, <clears throat> and that's it. It's a very simple product line, five different products, okay? And the Tower Garden is one of them. The Juice Plus company is all about serving people. That's why Nate and I said yes to partnering with this company because it just made sense to us because we're not salespeople, okay? We don't want to go and like bark down people's doors. We want to serve people. We want to pour into people. And that's what the Juice Plus company allows us to do. And at the same time, it allows us to supplement our ministry paychecks, which was also very appealing to us having families <clears throat> and very important to us. So maybe the Tower Garden makes sense to you tonight. Maybe some of these other products make sense to you tonight. Uh, maybe the business makes sense to you tonight. Honestly, when I first joined, it's, a, it's $52 a year to run my very own business. I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. I don't really have much to lose. So maybe that makes sense to you tonight. Whatever made sense to you tonight, we're so thankful that you were here and so thankful that you took the time to listen to this. Uh, get with the person that invited you to this event and they can answer additional questions about the tower or anything else that we mentioned tonight. But just thank you all so much for being here. And uh, we look forward to talking to you, to talking to you more. Absolutely. I'm going to stop the recording.